China's inflation eased in August, helped by slowing growth in food prices. China's consumer price index rose 2.4 percent compared to a year ago. That's down from 2.7 percent in July. Now, a slowdown in the growth of pork prices helped moderate food price increases overall. Core CPI, which excludes food and energy, was up half a percent, remaining at a record low. Producer prices fell 2 percent year on year in August. That compares to a 2.4 percent drop in July as industrial production picked up. Let's get you more perspective now on the state of China's economy. I'm joined live via Skype by Thomas Hayes. He's founder, chairman and managing member of equity manager Great Hill Capital. Good to talk to you again. Nice to speak to you, Rochelle. So what stood out to you the most in the latest inflation data? And what does it tell us about the health of China's economy? Yeah, I think the key thing, uh, the key headline here, Rochelle, is inflation eased a bit for consumers. And that was largely attributable to food. So you've been hit by two things. Number one, you had the swine flu with the pigs and the pork shortage that's created a culling of one million of the herd. So as a result, pork prices were up 52.6 percent year on year. That made up a lot of the CPI. Um, and you, so you had the uh, and the flooding. So the agricultural prices as well. If you took an index of 28 vegetables. They were at five-year highs this summer. So those two things uh, have really shut up, and they're slowly starting to come down as the flood flooding subsides and as the herd starts to get rebuilt so that pork prices can come down. So I think if you take out food, the inflation was very moderate and very healthy uh, looking forward, for sure. So then what's your outlook then, looking at how likely the floods in China are to continue affecting inflation in the short to long term? Yeah, well, I, I think the government is taking steps with the Clean Your Plate initiative. Uh, they are concerned about floods and droughts. They're concerned about supplies from the U.S. and from Australia. Uh, they're, supply, they're worried about, obviously, the, the size of the herd. And they're worried about the food prices being up 11.2 percent in August. Um, this will moderate, I think, as we move forward towards the end of the year. You're going to see this headline inflation come down as the uh, ag comes back, as the transport comes back, as the herd comes back. And on the PPI side, on the producer's side, uh, it's good to see these prices starting to continually recover every single month from a negative low base to now just negative 2 percent. And that's largely attributable to consistent, strong government stimulus. You had the uh, $500 billion stimulus in May, and it's really filtering into infrastructure, railroads, power lines, electric vehicle, charging stations, et cetera. And we're seeing property starts this summer so strong in China. If they continue at this run rate towards the end of the year, you could see year on year positive growth in property starts. And finally, the consumer is slowly coming back. Last month, domestic air, seats in the air, were at 86 percent of pre-pandemic levels. Analysts are estimating in September, domestic air flight will be at pre-pandemic levels. So things are coming, coming back on all ends. I think this spike in food is just a short-term phenomenon that's going to moderate as we get into the year end. That will be good for consumers. Right. And uh, certainly with the stimulus on the industrial side is very, very constructive. So then what do you think are going to be the key factors that are really going to influence China's consumer goods in the near term? Uh, continuing of growth in the near term? Well, I think you're going to see more uh, government stimulus for sure. You're also, you also see, Rochelle, global pent-up demand. We saw it in uh, exports. We're up 9.5 percent in August. So, so that's been a positive thing. And the government is committed to created 9 million jobs by the end of the year to keep unemployment at 6 percent. So the stimulus is going to keep coming until they meet that, that, uh, that need. And finally, the Chinese government has a Made in China 2025 program, which their initiative is to have 40 percent of all semiconductors used in China made domestically by the end of this year and 70 percent by the end of 2025. So that's going to create com continued domestic production demand, which should be a positive in the near term. Now, we've talked about how some of these things influence consumers. And what about the flood's impact on manufacturers, especially as China's trade is picking up gradually? And how that helps to stabilize CPI and PPI? 
Yeah, well, what you're seeing, you're seeing it really in commodities. I mean, the, the amount of uh, stimulus that's gone into infrastructure and construction is reflected, and we're seeing it in copper prices, in iron ore demand, in metals, in aluminum, et cetera. So uh, this is going to be continued growth that we're going to see moving forward uh, with the, with the uh, positive PPI numbers. All right, thank you so much. Always good to have you. Thomas Hayes there, founder, chairman, and managing member at Great Hill Capital. Thanks for having me, Rochelle. Now, for many architects,